today I'm reading from Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armour of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplications for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am, an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Hello there and welcome to Splodge Apologetics. Today we're carrying on from the last video which was about the whole armour of God. So grab your Bibles and your notebooks and we'll get straight into it. So today we're looking at the full armour of God that Paul talks about in Ephesians. Now first thing was the belt of truth and we must know the truth, we must have a basic grasp of what the word of God tells us about ourselves, about the world, about sin and about God himself and of Jesus Christ, the saviour of the world. We must know the truth because the truth sets us free. Paul was thinking about Roman soldiers and what they would wear when he was making these comparisons. Today we have a belt to hold up our trousers and keep our shirts tucked in. So the belt is our foundation. We must have a strong foundation in the word of God. We must have a, a, a good grasp of what the Bible says. Most importantly, we must know the author of the Bible, who is God himself. And obviously he used human beings to write the Bible, but at the end of the day, it's his word through those people. They were, ins they were inspired and moved along by the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible says. Now, there's a lot of people in the world who know the Bible back to front and know a lot of things about the Bible, but they don't know the author. They don't know Jesus Christ for themselves. They aren't born again. Some people even leave churches, are, are on television teaching false doctrine, some to make money, some to just be on television, just to be personalities, some to be spiritual. But they do not know the author. And you must know the author and you must be born again. Coming to him, repentance and faith, repentance of your sin, and coming to know him for yourself. That's where the belt of truth comes in. We must know the basic truths of the Bible. We must know him for ourselves. That's our foundation. There's people in 
universities, even teaching in universities, theology and other things, but they don't know God for themselves. They know about things and they even try to say that there is no God or this, have other ideas of what God is like. They're making God in their own image, but they are false, they're not biblical or sound because they've not placed their faith in him just making up theories and ideas and a lot of them dismiss the bible truths and teach it people even even leading churches devoid of the spirit because they only know about him and they don't know him they teach might maybe political things and social issues but not but not according to the word of God. Teaching things like we are all basically good when we're not. We're all sinners in need of the grace of God, needed to be saved of sin. And only Jesus Christ, the way, the truth and the life is the way out of sin and into a relationship with God. If we have the truth, we can stand against all the arguments that come against us. If we know the Word of God, what it teaches about different things, if we, had, if we have a biblical worldview, a, a biblical theology, we can stand against any argument that comes against us and any other religion t t says that this is the truth or that's the truth. We have a foundation in the Word of God that is true and sound it makes sense it's an eternal truth jesus is the eternal word it's the same yesterday today and forever so with our belt of truth we have a strong foundation in christ paul says that when we put in on the belt of truth we also had to put on the breastplate of righteousness with it because though we have that truth we have to have that truth in our heart and we protect that truth with the breastplate and we have to put that on to protect our heart. The Bible says to trust in the Lord with all our heart and don't lean on our own understanding to acknowledge him in all our ways and he will direct our paths. So we must have the breastplate and that will protect the chest and it also physically it will protect soldier the roman soldier and we are soldiers of the cross we are soldiers of the righteousness and our the righteousness isn't our own it's god's righteousness that he imputes to us when we have repented of our sin and given our lives over to christ so when we put on the belt we are keeping in place the breastplate the righteousness the, that guards the heart if an enemy attacks you with stones or arrows, sometimes set on fire, as they would be in the first century, or even a gun. Today's equivalent to the breastplate would be a bulletproof vest, but then back in the first century, it would be it just need to be a metal plate or a net metal shielding over your chest, your upper body, and that would protect you from the rocks and stones that people would throw at you the arrows and spears the breastplate of righteousness we must walk in the righteousness of God in the knowledge of his word walking with him in the spirit of God and not our own flesh a soldier doesn't get entangled in civilian affairs but he is looking to Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith and we are to look to him constantly we are not of this world, we are of his kingdom. And we are to go out bringing people to the kingdom. Out of the heart come all our attitudes and our character when we trust in, in God. But Jesus said that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. If we have a, a good heart, good things will come out of our mouths. If we have an evil heart, evil things will come out of our mouths. And that's why we must have a good heart that we protect and we nurture, we feed with the word of God daily and pray according to the word of God so we know that we are in the will of God. The shoes 
enable us to move forward, march, run, walk in righteousness and walk with the gospel, the readiness of the gospel of peace. We have to share the gospel, we have to go forward. This arm is never about moving backwards or retreating, it's always about moving forward. And there's no armour for the back because we have to move forward constantly spreading the word and spreading the truth of Jesus Christ. In the first century in Israel, it was important that the Roman soldiers were there to keep order. Not only they were governing, but they were like the police today. They were, go they were keeping order because there were a lot of people in Israel that didn't like the Romans being there. And there was people that were insurrectionists and rebe rebels against the Romans and there'd be lots of fights and riots going on and so the Roman soldiers were there to keep order. Barabbas was one of the people that killed, he was a rebel against the Roman and was, you know, he was one of the rioters and one of the trouble causers in Israel. They couldn't wait for the Messiah to come and even though he came they didn't recognise him, they didn't see him and that was Jesus. Roman soldiers wore proper shoes. Most of the people in Israel would be wearing sandals and they'd get all the dust on their feet. But Roman soldiers, because they marched everywhere and they, they were officials there to keep order. They had good shoes on. They were there showing their authority. Some have abused it as when Jesus was mocked and they placed the crown of thorns on his head, put a robe on him and mocked him, whipped him, beat him up. And that was even before they took him to crucifixion and before even trial. They were there to show who was in charge. And though we as Christians were not to go saying we're in charge, we're right and we're this and that, we have to be bold and strong in the Lord's power, as it says in the passage. We walk in readiness with the gospel, not with ulterior motives, but we have to take the gospel, the truth that we have in our heart and that we are renewing in our minds constantly, praying with our supplication where we are, we are advancing the kingdom. And that's why we have to walk forward in advancing, moving forward all the time, not letting things get to us, but carrying on the work God has given us to do. God made his disciples to spread the news. He didn't do it so we could sit back and think, oh, we're saved now. But no, we have to move on. We have to be salt and light in this world. So far, we've looked at the things that the soldier must wear and we must wear as Christians. But also, there's things that we need to carry. And the first one is the shield of faith. We need a shield because the opposition will throw things at us, whether it be stones, arrows, flaming arrows, spears. And those are like, again, those are arguments and opinions and their worldviews that they throw at us. And we must be able to answer them. This is apologetics at work. The word apologia, it, it means to defend what we believe and uh, have an answer for the people that question us for our beliefs and our faith. We need a shield to knock down and destroy all arguments. Our weapons are not carnal, but the mighty through God and we are to knock out the opposition and, and not physically, we are not to use violence, but we are to hold the shield up to protect us against these arrows and these accusations and other things that may come at us. We must have a helmet of salvation and the helmet is to protect our minds that we are constantly renewing but also they enable us to focus, they shield our eyes and because we must be alert and aware. But the first three things we mentioned were about things that we wear. It's a good idea to wear it all the time. The helmet of salvation is there to protect our minds and 
enable us to renew our minds and to be focused in what we are doing, focusing on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The helmet would protect the eyes and the forehead. We know in 1 Samuel 17 there was a big soldier, he was a giant and his name was Goliath and he was of the Philistines and he was antagonizing the Israel army, all of whom were scared to face him because their faith was in their numbers and their, their military might, but they were all scared to face Goliath one on one. But the mistake that Goliath had, had in his arrogance and his size and his, and his self-belief, he may have had gods, but they're false gods. But he was, he was criticizing Israel for their belief in God, and none of them was able to defend themselves or to defend the name of God because they were confident in their, their might as an army. But even then, they weren't that confident because they hadn't placed their faith in God. But David came along. Goliath kind of let off his guard. He took his helmet off if he had one. And if he hadn't, it showed his arrogance and he was full of himself and he had his size. And he said, am I a dog that you come up with me sticks? Because he saw David approaching him with his little sling and his stones. And he thought, come on, you're joking, aren't you? Now, even Goliath had a shield bearer, a, son, a man who was stood in front of him with his shield to protect Goliath a little bit. So that Goliath could concentrate on fighting and slaughtering, which is what he did. But he didn't reckon on David and his sling. He just looked at the out of man and they didn't know of the faith of David, the faith that had confidence in God, not in his armour, not in himself. David's confidence was in God. And so he was able to slay Goliath, kill him with a stone that sunk into his forehead, knocked him out and killed him. And then he chopped his head off. David's confidence was in God, not in his own strength. And we have to be the same. We are not to be confident in our own strength, our own knowledge in our head, our power, or in, because everything we have comes from God and we should acknowledge him in all our ways, like I said earlier. We are hearts are to be full of his word. You must know the word. Know as much of it as you can. Learn it. Understand it. I know you won't know everything. We can never grasp the greatness of God. We could know. We can know so much more than we do. And if we renew our minds, walking in the will of God, which is His word, you must have the helm of salvation to be assured of your salvation in Jesus. And if you're not assured of that, you need to repent and give your life over to Jesus. Only he is the saviour. Only he is the way, the truth and life. It's only through him that you can come to know God and be in relationship with him. In your renewing of your mind, you are to walk in the purposes of God, not your own purpose, not trying to get your own career and such, but to be in the will of God and knowing the purpose of God for your life. And part of that purpose is spreading the word of truth, being a disciple and making disciples. Finally, the weapon is the most important weapon. The sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And you can know all this, but if you don't have the Spirit, that illuminates what this word says. You're just full of head knowledge and ideas and need to know him, the author and the finisher of our faith, who is the word, Jesus Christ is the word of God. And he became flesh and he gave us this word. And we have, people have died so that we could have this written down, brought to us so that we can learn it and understand it. That's why it was divided up to chapter and verse, but originally it wasn't in chapter and verse. But we, they are aids to help us remember scriptures, but they are not divinely inspired, but the word itself is. The stories are there for our, 
admonition and instruction and growth. And we are to walk in the word of God, which is his will. You must know what he says about you, what he says about the world, what he says about sin, what he says about God. And we can find all that in the Bible, what it says about man. And finally, after we've got all these pieces of equipment, we must also pray. We pray according to the word and we pray for the people that we are going to reach, the people we speak to, the situations that we're in, whether persecution or trouble like there was in the first century when Paul was writing. He was in prison when he was writing his letters, including Ephesians, and he was in prison for preaching the word of God. We had to pray according to the word of God, not our wishful thinking, and not name it and claim it and all this nonsense that we see on television, supposedly in God's name, teaching false gospels and heresies that are not biblical. We are soldiers of the cross. We are ambassadors, not just of the cross, but of the resurrection. All the disciples were, were eyewitnesses of the, the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he sent us out into the world to disciple people, to baptise them in the name of Jesus and to teach them all that we have learned. Teach people what you know. Teach them the theology behind these things, why it makes sense in comparison to other religions and faiths and cults and ideologies. We must know the word. We must be able to stand strong in it, taking it forward renewing our minds with it and understanding it and helping others to understand it. Things like like the nature of man, sin, righteousness, the atonement of Jesus Christ. And that's it for today. Take care, God bless and goodbye.